Chemistry 30. This is our fourth and fifth lesson in the electrochemistry unit. This is moles of electrons and Faraday's constant. In this lesson, we will learn how to calculate moles of electrons, explore the concept of electroplating, use Faraday's constant, and work through six examples. Consider the following. If one electron is given off at the anode, then that same electron must be accepted at the cathode. The same amount of electrons will pass through the cell, meaning no electrons can ever escape. Electrons can be quantitatively expressed in moles and used in a molar ratio of a chemical equation. Calculating moles of electrons. Step number one, write a balanced redox half reaction. Remember, only half reactions contain electrons. Step two, use the molar ratio of the chemical equation to calculate the amount of electron moles. Example number one, if 3.2 grams of copper is made at the cathode, how many moles of electrons must be given off by the anode in the following cell? Pause the video and attempt this example. The amount of electrons given off by the anode equals the amount of electrons gained at the cathode. And we know copper is the cathode, which is going through reduction. Using our cell notation, we can see that copper two plus ions will then form copper solid. To balance this half reaction, we need to add two electrons to the reactant side, representing the gaining of electrons. We can then take the 3.2 grams of copper and divide it by the molar mass of copper, resulting in moles of copper. We can then use the molar ratio in the chemical equation, which will be a two over one ratio to convert the value into moles of electrons. Our final answer, the amount of moles of electrons given off at the anode is 0 0.10 moles. Example number two. How many moles of electrons are given off when 45.5 grams of zinc is oxidized at the anode of the following cell? Pause the video and attempt this example. Something to first note is H plus in the cell notation represents that one of the solutions is acidic. We know that zinc is being oxidized at the anode. Well, therefore, it's going through oxidation. We can then assume that zinc solid is going to form zinc two plus ions. To balance this half reaction, we have to add two electrons to the product side. This represents the loss of electrons. We can then start with the 45.5 grams of zinc and divide it by the molar mass of zinc to get moles of zinc. We can then use the molar ratio in the chemical equation, which will be a two over one to get the moles of electrons, which is 1.39 moles. Example number three. How much silver is made when 0 0.240 moles of electrons pass through the circuit of a silver copper cell? Pause the video and attempt this example. Silver is made. This represents reduction. 
Therefore, silver must be the cathode. We can see from our cell notation that Ag plus is forming Ag solid. To balance this half reaction, you have to add one electron to the reactant side, representing the gaining of electrons. We can then start with the 0 0.240 moles of electrons and use the molar ratio in the chemical equation, which is a one to one, to get the moles of Ag solid. Once we have moles, we can then times it by the molar mass of silver to get our value into grams. 25.9 grams of silver is made in this cell. Electroplating is a process in which a metal is deposited on the surface of an object placed at the cathode of an electrolytic cell. Remember, the number of electrons lost must always be equal to the number of electrons gained in a cell. For example, when zinc is plated onto a steel pipe to galvanize it, two moles of electrons must be gained by one mole of zinc two plus ions to deposit one mole of zinc solid atoms as a metal. This is represented in the half reaction below. Electrons becomes part of the molar ratio and can be expressed in moles. Charge and current. The charge given off by a cell is equal to the current that is flowing in that cell multiplied by the time the cell is running. One coulomb is the quantity of charge transferred by a current of one amp meter in one second. Now we can completely forget about this formula. It is not needed. What is needed is below. Current is measured in amps, which is equal to coulombs per second. What we need to know is five amps is equal to five coulombs per second. 10 amps is equal to 10 coulombs per second. The actual units of current are coulombs per second. This is a conversion ratio, just like grams per mole. If we have coulombs, we can use this value to go to seconds. If we have seconds, we can use this value to convert to coulombs. Faraday's constant. The mass of an element produced or consumed at an electrode is directly proportional to the time the cell operates at a constant current. Faraday's constant is 9.65 times 10 to the fourth coulombs per one mole of electron. This value can be found in the Chemistry 30 data booklet on page three. This represents that 9.65 times 10 to the fourth coulombs of charge is transferred for every one mole of electron that flows through a cell. This is another unit conversion. This allows us to convert coulombs to moles or vice versa, moles of electrons to coulombs. Example number four. What amount of electrons is transferred in a cell that operates for 1.25 hours at a current of 0 0.150 amps. Pause the video and attempt this example. To answer this example, we will start with the 1.25 hours. We will then convert the hours to seconds by timesing it by 3060 which is the amount of seconds in one hour. At this point, our unit is now seconds. 
We can then use the amps, which is provided in the question, which the units are actually coulombs per second. We can then cancel out seconds. As a result, our answer is now in coulombs. We can then divide by Faraday's constant to get our answer into moles of electrons. If we perform this calculation, our final answer is 6.99 times 10 to the negative 3 moles of electrons transferred in the cell. Example number 5. How long in minutes will it take a current of 3.50 amps to transfer 0 0.1 Zero, 0 moles of electrons. Pause the video and attempt this example. First, we will start with the moles of electrons, 0 0.100, and times it by Faraday's constant. This will cancel out moles of electrons and leave our value in coulombs. We can then divide by the coulombs per second, which is the amps. Dividing by 3.50 coulombs per one second cancels out coulombs and leaves our value in seconds. We can then divide by 60 seconds, which is equal to one minute. As a result, our final unit will be minutes and our answer is 46.0 minutes. Half cell stoichiometry. You know how to calculate the moles of electrons using Faraday's constant and using current conversions. Now, let's do graviometric stoichiometry. Example number six. An electrolytic cell was set up using one inert electrode and one silver electrode. The electrolyte used for the cell was aluminum sulfate. The cell was operated for 11.6 minutes with a constant current of 5.5 amps. Pause the video and attempt examples A, B, and C. Example 6A. What is the minimum voltage required for the cell to run? In this example, we simply have to find the net cell potential. We will first list all of the species present. Remember there was one inert electrode, which could have been carbon or platinum. And don't forget that water should always be included when we have aqueous solutions. We then have to pick our strongest oxidizing agent and strongest reducing agent and list both of their half reactions. At the cathode, water is gaining two electrons forming hydrogen gas and hydroxide ions. Since this is a reduction reaction, we will list the reduction potential, which is shown in the data booklet. At the anode, silver is breaking down into silver ions and one electron. Since this is an oxidation half reaction. I have to flip the sign, which is provided in the Chemistry 30 data booklet. As a result, if we add both half reactions together and the two half reaction potentials, the net cell potential is negative 1.63 volts. As a result, the minimum voltage required to run the cell is positive 1.63 volts. Example 6b. Did the mass at the anode increase or decrease and by how much? Well remember the anode goes through oxidation which is the breakdown and loss of electrons. Therefore the anode will always decrease in mass. From our two half reactions, the anode is going to be silver solid. 
First, we have to convert the 11.6 minutes, which the cell ran for, into seconds. We can then take the 696 seconds and times it by the coulombs per second, which was provided in the question as amps. This cancels out seconds and leaves our value in coulombs. We can then divide by Faraday's constant to cancel out coulombs and convert our value to moles of electrons. We can then use the half reaction molar ratio to convert moles of electrons to moles of silver solid. This is a one to one ratio. Once we have the moles of silver solid, we can then times it by the molar mass of silver to convert our answer into grams. As a result, the anode decreased by a mass of 4.3 grams. Example number 6C. Identify all the evidence you should expect from this reaction. In order to answer this question, we have to know the full redox reaction which is occurring in the cell. And we've already identified that the mass of the anode will decrease. To find the evidence that a chemical reaction has occurred, we need to look at the products because products form from a chemical reaction. Well, we should see gas bubbles being formed from the production of H2. We should also see an increase in the pH of the solution because OH minus ions are being formed. Moving forward, we will explore the concept of corrosion.